I'm going to show you how to write up what you're doing. And this is where the chatbot comes in, the artificial intelligence. You want to describe your data and think of you're writing this for yourself. Um, think of your audience, of course, but you want to document everything that you did so that you have it all in one place. Uh, we did an exploratory factor analysis. And how do you write that up? How do you describe what it is? Well, that's where the chatbot comes in. See, I typed in here, how would I explain what an exploratory factor analysis tells us with survey data about beliefs and behaviors? And then it tells me how to explain that. So over here in the paper. Now in Jamovi, under the factor analyses, you have the choice of we could have done a principal component analysis, but instead we did an exploratory factor analysis. Now you might want to write why we chose to do the EFA instead of the PCA. Then ask the chatbot, when is it appropriate to do a principal component analysis instead of a exploratory factor analysis, and what's the difference? And he'll just tell you. So here I asked on a different project I was doing, when is it appropriate to do the principal component analysis versus the EFA, and he just explains it. The PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique to identify a smaller set of uncorrelated variables known as the principal components, uh, etc. If you know the underlying structure of the data because of uh, some theoretical framework that was used to create the survey, then you don't need to do the EFA. On the project that we're doing here, the example that we're using, I'm not sure there is a theoretical framework, even though the, the items are clustered under certain headings. It, I'm not sure there's research behind it. So we did an EFA instead of a PCA. The assumption checks are tests that check that your data is appropriate for the analyses that you're doing. And then how do you interpret it? Put it in the AI and ask, how do I interpret this? So I ask here, how do I interpret the results of my factor analysis? And he tells me the KMO value of 0.6 or higher is good. And Bartlett's test of sphericity needs to be significant. So here in Jamovi, Bartlett's test of sphericity, which you get by checking that box, is significant because the p-value is less than 0 0.001. And here's the KMO measure of sampling adequacy. The overall number is at the top, and it is greater than 0.6. So you put that in your write-up that you have tested your assumptions and your data is appropriate for this type of analysis. So here's where I put that in. And then I started writing about that we removed variables with a, a loading of less than 0.5 because that's what I had it set at. And we lost a lot of variables by setting it at 0.5. So I just wondered what, what's an appropriate, what's acceptable? So I asked the chatbot what's acceptable and he said anything above 0.3 is acceptable. So I thought, I think I'll lower it to see if we keep more of the variables. So here in Jamovi, I set the factor loading to hide loadings below 0.4 instead of 0.5. And one thing I noticed that that does for us, we do keep more variables, and we also kept the Donald Trump variable. So that'll be interesting to see. It is in the factor with these, and I will uh, cut them out and put it in the write-up. And it's negatively correlated, even though it's not, I don't think it's written backwards. Five is love. So that's like being pro-choice. Oh, I see. That makes sense, that it's negatively correlated. The people who are not pro-choice love Donald Trump. Okay. So I set the factor loading to 0.4. And here's what remained. And 
what you need to do is name these, like look at them and give this component a name. This is like the satisfaction component. This component here, this is the sort of political or worldview component, probably political here, uh, mental health component, immigration loaded with regardless of what kind of urban environment you personally prefer, what are your political views on density and upzoning? Well, I guess that makes sense that those two clustered together. And then this one was all by itself, STEM. And I wondered, what's the difference between a factor with only one variable and the variables that did not end up in any factor? So I put that question to the chat, GPT. So see here I asked, what's the difference between a factor with only one variable in it and variables that did not load at all? And it gives you a very good, easy to understand answer that you might want to include in your write-up. But you see the importance of using this artificial intelligence as you're doing the analyses so that you can stop and you can ask questions and you can get an easy to understand answer to everything that you're doing. Now, you may wonder, why are we doing this factor analysis? Well, the reason why we're doing it is so that we can see what the underlying structure of the data is, just out of curiosity, and also so that after we do this factor analysis and we create new variables based on each factor, a linear combination using the factor loadings to create a new variable for each one of these components, then we can look to see if different kind of people differ from each other or are they the same as each other on these components and we have a lot of variables in this data set of different kinds of people people categories there's a lot more men than women took this survey but there's enough people took the survey we can probably look at do men differ from women on these components do people with certain kind of jobs differ like who is the same as each other on these components which will be interesting. But until then, to finish this, um, you also want to do a check the reliability, do the re reliability analysis. And if you wonder, well, what does that, what's that going to tell me? Put it in the chat bot and ask, what does the reliability analysis tell me? Which I already did that, so I've got the answer. But we need to just load in here. I started doing it already. Um, we just need to put in our factors. I'm going to take these out so I put them in the same order that we have them. So I need to get a look at. Uh, let's see. Which treasures report for my HOA? No, here it is. Okay. We want life satisfaction. Just put them in this order because that will make it easier. And I will pause this and turn it back on when I have them loaded. Okay, so I loaded them all into here. But then I got a message when it computed the reliability statistic that the ones that were coded backwards where one is good and five is bad whereas the rest of them are the other way around that so they were negatively correlated it told me that that messes up the reliability statistic and i need to switch those so we'll just assume that i did i don't want to take the time to do it now but you make you just reverse them so that five is one etc so you just recode those variables and then put them in but then when you run your your reliability analysis, it will compute accurately on all of them. But the Cronbox Alpha at 0.981 is, that's good. And see, I checked the box to get the mean and the standard deviation, which just adds those to the table. And you want to report those in your write-up. Just make another table of all the factors 
and include the mean standard deviation and the Cronbox alpha for each one of them. And you want to know how to interpret it and what it means, put it in the chat button and ask them, how do I interpret this? What does it mean? And how should I explain that in my write-up?